Voss Sapling boys and happy Saturday. Welcome to another squad builder, but it's not just any squad builder. It is the BBVA Fantasy Football Tournament squad builder. Myself and seven other YouTubers, including Skills, Nepenthes, Tobias, Jesse, Bates and Finch, and Natani, and myself. Wow, I was able to get that out in one uh, in one try. Uh, we are all participating in a tournament. Um, I'm not sure who I'm playing yet first. That first game will be up tomorrow. As a matter of fact, I do know I'm playing Atani. Uh, we haven't played yet, but I am playing Atani tomorrow, so on my channel I'm going to upload my version, and he's going to upload his uh, to his version. Question of the episode, what do you guys think that score is going to be between me, myself and Atani? Let me know in the comment section below. Also, the way it worked, we all hopped into a Skype call, can only select BBVA players, no team can have, uh, no two teams can have the same player. Each person was given a random draft order. Uh, I believe Skills or, or Bateson was given the first overall. I got the eighth overall pick, which also meant I had the ninth overall pick. Yeah, this is really exciting. You guys really enjoyed the Premier League version of this, and now we are doing the BBVA, BBVA flavor with plenty of top-notch names and also hidden gems that squad builders that I've made across uh, across a couple of months uh, have actually helped me with this particular draft. I was able to notice guys in the later rounds that I might not have noticed otherwise. Before we get in the episode, if we could blast 1,500 likes, that would be fucking epic. Subscribe button's on the screen. At HD is my Twitter if you want to follow me there. If you're looking for a cheap and reliable Ultimate Team coin service, check out FastFootCoins.com. Link is in the description below. Use ZWE for 5% off all purchases. All right, boys, so kicking things off and... I was sort of surprised, but not really surprised that he fell to me. I still can't believe he fell to me. Messi fell to me in eighth overall pick. Seven guys went before Messi, which kind of makes sense because Diego Costa's OP, Bale, uh, Ronaldo, Benzema, all those guys went before him. But Messi landed to me with the eighth overall pick. I took him first overall. I really don't need to go over his stats. He's a freaking stud. The only thing, the only downfall is it lacks a little bit of strength. That's his one downside, and I suppose that's why people didn't uh, select him. He's not a true striker, which is not what I'm using him for in the squad. As you can see, I have him as a, in the center forward position in a 4-4-1-1 uh, formation. Without any further ado, let's go to the next pick. So with the 8th overall pick, I went with Messi. Then I had back-to-back -back picks. With the ninth overall, I took Iniesta. Iniesta, the guy is an absolute G. 75 pace, 91 passing, 91 dribbling. He's a freaking legend. I think he's one of the most undervalued players in the game. Not a lot of people give him enough credit. Uh, but these are the two Barcelona men that I am anchoring my team around. Let's see who I took in the third round. All right, boys. So with my third round pick, I went with Pabon. 85 pace, 74 shooting, 78 dribbling, uh, four-star skill moves. He's a freaking stud. He's only five seven, which was my downfall. I was gonna run Messi and Pabon. To be honest with you, I thought Pabon was like six foot. He's actually like five six or five seven. So between him and Messi, they're not even like six foot almost. Um, which is not true. They're obviously over six foot to combine. But uh, um, this is why I went with this particular formation. I just couldn't get away with running two strikers, so I put Messi at center forward, and then we have Pabon at striker. Uh, Pabon is a freaking beast. He's got like some crazy strength rating. I forgot what it was, but it's over like 87 or some shit like that. Without any further ado, let's check out our fourth round pick. So something very interesting happened in the first few rounds. Center backs were going left and right. Like they were the most popular picks. The, the, the big strikers went early and then there was a run on center backs. And if I didn't get one here, I was going to be left with absolute horseshit or so I thought. So I went with Godin, 6-1, medium, medium work rates. He's got 83 defense, 83 heading, uh, 66 pace. Not the fastest guy in the world, but he's got height. He's got uh, the heading ability. He's got high jumping, and um, he's Uruguayan. What else can you say? He's a freaking consistent, consistent center back that uh, I anchored the uh, anchored the back line around. Let's move on over to my fifth overall pick, my fifth round pick. All right, boys. So with my fifth round pick, I had to go with a right back. Uh, I I had took Godin. I, I shored up my strikers. I got one midfielder. I thought to myself, let's shore up a right back because there's going to be some pacey wingers in the BBVA. Went with Dani Alves, arguably a top five, top three running uh, right back in the entire game. Um, just a complete stud. And it was interesting to see how that worked out in the draft. When someone took a stud player at a certain position, everyone after that sort of said, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to need to get my own version of that. So when I took Iniesta, some people went for midfielders. Uh, I forget who was it? Um, uh, Juan Fran? Someone took Juan Fran before they took Alves, I think. I'm, I can't be certain, but that's essentially how it worked in the draft. Someone would take a, a prime player, and then that would uh, that would spark a trend. All right, so in the sixth round, we were able to grab Barcelona winger uh, Alexis Sanchez, the Chilean, 87 pace, 85 dribbling, and 74 passing, 75 shooting, and he's got four-star skill moves. One of the best right mids, right wingers in the BVA period. I was able to get him in the sixth round, which I thought was an absolute steal. Uh, let's move on to our seventh round pick. All right, boys, so in the seventh round, we snagged Mexican Dos Santos, an insanely solid buy there in that round. In the seventh round, to be able to get a left mid like Dos Santos is 
was very clutch in my opinion. 85 pace, 87 dribbling, 4 star skill moves, not much you can ask for there. Uh, 76 passing, he's got very uh, solid crossing ratings, not that we have anyone with any significant uh, height to cross it into, but uh, he's got speed as does Alexis Sanchez, especially in the 4-4-1-1 that relies on the wingers uh, to create opportunities for the guys in the middle. That definitely helps out. I think we got a steal in Dos Santos. Let's go to the 8th round. 8th round again, I know this sounds very repetitive, but I feel like I got a steal. Rakitic, I think, is a top 5 midfielder in the BBVA. You can argue with me. We got Isco, uh, Iniesta, and a handful of other names, but Rakitic, his shooting capabilities are freaking on point. He's got 81 shooting. He's got like uh, 88 long shot. His long shots are ridiculous. He's got high finishing, 86 passing. He's got passing on point with Iniesta, so that midfield uh, keying in on Messi is going to be hopefully uh, leading me to some success, but got Rakitic in the 8th round. Absolute steal. Let's move on to our ninth round pick. All right, boys, so in the ninth round, we snagged the water horse. He doesn't have a ton of height, but he's got 85 defense and 80 heading. I could not believe that he was still there. Was dumbfounded. I was looking for... Uh, I was looking for... I really didn't think I was going to end up with anyone good after having gone Godin and then realized I needed to fill out the other positions. Sure, I could have uh, picked a center back to go along with Godin earlier on, but it was an absolute blessing to be able to come across Puyol, a.k.a. the wet hair, uh, this late. Let's move on to our 10th round pick. 10th round pick was Guaita. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly, but as soon as I picked him, Finch was the first to say, Everyone that plays Tvibak, just shoot from anywhere because Guaita sucks. And uh, I don't know if that's true or not, but apparently he's the worst keeper in the BBVA. I saw 85 reflexes, 79 positioning, and 80 diving and 81 hand uh, handling as very key uh, attributes, especially for a non rear gold. So we are going to see how that fares in my game versus Atani tomorrow, so make sure you tune in for that for sure. That's probably going to be the first upload of the day, tomorrow being Sunday. Uh, let's look at the last pick of the uh, draft. Alright guys, so the last pick in the draft, the 11th round, as you can imagine, there wasn't much left. I went with Insua. He's got 76 pace, 72 shooting. He's got some of the most, I mean, for a non rear gold, look at those stats. 75 heading, 80 defense, 73, he's got even dribbling, 72 passing, 76 pace, he's just solid all around, that's kind of what popped out to me, he's got high, medium attacking work rates, but boys, that is the BB, that, this is Tveback's BBVA Fantasy Football Tournament Squad Builder, this is the squad that I have to use through any games, if I get past Atani, I have to use this squad, no two players are on the same team, that's part of the cool thing of this tournament, go check out Skills' channel, he uploaded the live draft, if you're interested in seeing the full 30 minutes of the draft of us in the Skype call selecting players, definitely go over to his channel and check it out, again, check out the rest of the guys in the tournament, their links will be in the description below, let's blast 1,500 likes, uh, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, wish me luck, hashtag Sway Army, and um, hopefully, uh, hopefully I win a few games. I've, I've got a game against the Tani tomorrow that I'm very nervous about. He's got a solid squad. But without any further ado, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Till next time, boys. Tschüss. Later. Ade. What's happening, boys? And happy Friday.